Ellen Powell resigns from Reddit, Microsoft modifies its focus, Cortana picks up the slack, and we finally get a communicator of our dreams. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 378 for Friday, July 10th. 2015. Welcome. I'm Father Robert Balliser. Megan is taking the day off. In what is being touted as a mutual decision by a Reddit board member, Reddit's interim CEO, Ellen Pau, has resigned. After a week's worth of negative reports, which stayed, started after the firing of Reddit's popular AMA staffer, Victoria Taylor, and propelled by a mass online protest on the pro-free speech community, the company announced that Steve Huffman, a Reddit co-founder, is taking over as CEO. Now let's get to the rest of the news. Microsoft over the past couple of weeks has been making some pretty big moves to focus their attention towards its desktop division. And joining us tonight is Peter Bright, Dr. Pizza, technology editor of Ars Technica, to go over some of the details. Welcome, Peter. Hi. Now in your story, you suggested that Nadella is threatening to consign Microsoft to the future of desktop obscurity. Some of the signs have been pretty big. The sale of the Bing Image Group to Uber, the laying off of 7,800 employees in the handset division, the writing off of the entire 7.6, actually even more than the 7.2 billion in acquisition from the Nokia purchase, and the sale of display ads to AOL. That's a lot of moves. What do you think is the end game? Uh, the one theory is that uh, Satya Nadella is trying to get rid of business divisions that aren't performing well. And certainly he has done that. Um, display ads was never a big thing. Um, most of the mapping imaging is bought in already. So maybe it made sense to say, we're going to buy everything in rather than try to do some of it in-house, some of it bought in. But uh, the Nokia uh, write down and layoffs are really the big one. Um, we know that because uh, even in last quarter's financials, we know that they weren't hitting sales targets that they had hoped to hit. Um, and, you know, phone models hadn't come out that we were expecting to come out. And so there was problems with, with that division. So we knew that something was going to happen. But writing off the entire acquisition and it seems uh, sacking everyone who worked in manufacturing. We're not quite sure. We know that there's still a few thousand former Nokia staff in Microsoft that spread in a few places around the globe. A few thousand still in Finland, I think, and others elsewhere. So they're not getting out of phones entirely, but certainly they're not going to be building their own phones, and the, the phone division is massively scaled back from what it was. Um, which is presumed to be, you know, again, phones are one of these divisions that haven't been performing well. So is is Nadella getting ready to get out of phones? You know, just as he's got out of display ads, got out of collecting map data. Now, obviously, display ads and map data are both smaller, but you know, it, it, it looks like there's a pattern here. Peter, and let's the, talk about the, that. Uh, it's 2.6% penetration. Of course, that's got to be disappointing for Microsoft and Windows Phone. But they announced that they want to focus on value, business, and flagship models of that phone. Right. Some people are saying that that's actually the death knell for Windows Phone. What's your take? Well, yeah, I, I think it's tricky. So over the last year, they've released a bunch of low-end handsets. Uh, some people say too many. That, you know, they, they hit a bunch of different price points. They have different specs. And they haven't produced any flagships because they had a flagship in development and it didn't work. So it got canceled. So the the new policy of just hitting, hitting three markets, um, according to a, a report on Bloomberg, they're probably going to have one or two handsets within each category. So one or two flagships, one or two business phones and one or two value phones, which is a, a big shift from what they've been doing and what they inherited from Nokia. 
Right. Now that and, that does tend to make Microsoft very desktop centric. And today on TNT, Mike Elgin discussed the report from the IDC, which shows that PC sales have dropped 11.8 percent year over year. Now, as tablets and larger phones have become more popular, but penetration of Windows Phone is down. Do you think that this seemingly desktop first strategy for Satya is viable for Microsoft? I think it's really dangerous long term. I think, okay, yes, on, in one sense, it's playing to the strength. And the desktop PC isn't going to go away, I don't think. Um, you know, there will always be people doing CAD and software development and gaming and all these kind of tasks that you're never going to be doing on your phone or a tablet. Right. So the desktop is never going to go away, but it's it's much less important than it was five years ago, and certainly much less important than it was ten years ago. You know, you have a, a new generation of people um, in South America, Africa, Asia, who are getting smartphones, and their smartphone is their computer. They don't have a desktop PC. Um, like they they may. Like in parts of the world, they may go to an internet cafe and, and occasionally use a, a desktop PC, but their own computing experience, their their personal computing experience is not a personal computer. It's a smartphone. Right. So the desktop PC is not influential and it's it's not going to capture this next, you know, CEOs like Microsoft and, and Nokia have talked about the next billion users. The next billion users is is going to be phone users, smartphone users. Let, let's talk about the, the, that next billion of users. Today, you also wrote that Microsoft is going to be killing off three of its MSN apps over the next few months. That's travel, food and drink, and health and fitness, which that seems to be right in the, the, the wheelhouse for that next billion users. Is right. Microsoft planning to have Cortana pick up the slack for those loss of um, features? That, that's a good question. Like at the moment, so so Microsoft has got a bunch of apps that are MSN branded, like news and weather and uh, money, sports. Those ones are staying because people actually look at them. You know, they look at the news app daily. They look to see how their shares are doing in the money app. Um, the the three apps there they're killing off uh, are less used, uh, less reason to use them. But they still tie it into other things. So Cortana, when she's giving you your flight information, you can you can click through to say, well, I want to see how delayed this flight is, or you know well, that that sort of information. You could click through in Cortana, she would jump to the travel app, and the travel app would show you some data. If the travel app goes away, what happens? Well, maybe Cortana could just get user interface to do that for herself. Maybe Cortana will just take you to a website. We don't know. We just know that it does this thing at the moment and it's not going to be able to do it in the future. Um, the, the health and fitness app is, is similarly slightly strange. When Microsoft released its band, it said, yeah, we've got this band hardware and that's a fitness device. But but it's not just about the device. We have this fitness platform where you know third parties can tap in and you'll be able to sort of share medical records with your you know, with 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 doctors and and you know, there's this this ecosystem we're trying to develop. Um, so naively, one would think that Microsoft would want to promote health and fitness, and you know, collecting data from wearables, whether it's the Microsoft Band or a Fitbit or anything else. Um, you know, integrating it with the online services and and make this into a a bigger service. Whereas what they're actually doing is they're stopping the app entirely. Um, so it, it's 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 a little odd that on the one hand they, they say they're trying to build this platform, and then on the other hand they're they're stopping apps, you know, killing off apps that reasonably would have been a part of that platform. Yeah, that's definitely definitely a mixed message. And finally, yeah. uh, this let's let's end on an up note here. This week you had a few things to say about an upcoming product from a company called Wand. Now, the product is a Star Trek communicator replica that is actually a fully functioning Bluetooth speakerphone. Now, what did you love or hate about it? What I, I mean, the attention to detail and the design look spectacular. It, it looks just like you will remember from, from watching the original series. And it, 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 it's sort of amazing in, in that sense. 
but gosh, isn't technology so much better than the Star Trek communicator? Like, I had the Star Trek communicator 10 years ago, and it was called the Motorola Razor V3. And that wasn't just a Bluetooth headset. That was a whole phone. And, and like, you know, I could, send, I could send text messages, and I could do picture messages and all these things. Whereas those guys up in the, or whatever it is, 24th, 25th century with their, with their communicators, they can't send emoji. They can't do anything. They can just talk to like this switchboard operator in the sky. And it's it's like this science fiction tech is horrible. <laughs> We're so much better off in the real world. Now that said, if someone invents a transporter, you're there. I'm there. Replicator, oh yes. Peter, thank you very much for being an advocate for the real world. Of course, uh, where can people go if they want, want to find the latest and greatest of your work? So I write for ArsTechnica.com, and you can also follow me on Twitter at, at Dr. Pizza. That's right. Once again, that's Peter Bright, technology editor at Ars Technica, and he can be found on Twitter at Dr. Pizza. We thank you for being on Tech News Tonight. On to a few more stories we're following today. As we already know, the New York Stock Exchange went down on Wednesday for four hours. Initially, many believed that it was a cyber attack somehow synchronized with the crash of the United Airlines system. It has since been discovered that the issue with the NYSE was an internal malfunction not connected to any form of terrorism, cybercrime, or coordinated attack. Officials have said that a Tuesday evening software upgrade to the quote-unquote matching engine was the culprit. The matching engine is responsible for matching buyers with sellers, and the update was supposed to make the timestamps on those transactions more precise. The software on the engine was updated, but it seems that not all the gateways used for client communications received the patch. This created glitches by 7 a.m. on Wednesday. The engineers tried updating the gateways in the middle of the trading day, but the glitches grew in severity until trading was halted at 11.32 a.m. Brittany Nunn lost legal custody of her two children, so she and her husband, Peter Barr, took the children to Mexico to avoid the ruling. While in Mexico, they continued to use their Spotify and Netflix accounts. An investigator out of Colorado, executing a search warrant with Spotify, was able to identify the IP address used by Nunn and Barr to connect to those services. Tracking a package ordered by Nunn to the Cabo San Lucas address, the authorities were able to rescue the children and return them safely to their legal parents. Spotify says that it may share users' information to, quote, respond to a legal process, for example, a court order or subpoena, if we believe in good faith that it is necessary to do so and to protect the safety of any person, unquote. Finally, earlier this week on This Week in Google, we were introduced to Google's neural network trained visualization technique, Deep Dream, which reviews images and identifies and enhances edges and shapes. Digital artist Johan Norberg takes us on a journey inside the artificial brain. Let's take a look. Uh, I kind of, I'm tripping out a little bit. So this, evidently this, uh, I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to do. I do know that it gives me nightmares and it makes me never look at puppies the same way. Thank you, Google. Thank you for destroying nature for me and my childhood. Wow. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Father Robert Balliser. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.